You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're officially over here at Studio J, a.k.a. Studio Jeans, doing it at your mom's house. I'm Ryan Sickler. You can find me on all social media at Ryan Sickler. My website's ryansickler.com. My new album, I tell you every week, get a hold of yourself, available everywhere you get comedy and music. Get over on Spotify and make those channels, rate and review it on iTunes. Um, And uh, it's out there on Sirius, all that stuff. April 4th through the 6th, I'm at the House of Comedy in Phoenix. I think that's, what, two weeks from now. Uh, April 26th and 27th, I'll be in Vegas at the Vegas Comedy Festival. I'll be doing some June shows in Richmond, Maryland, and Atlantic City with Tommy Buns. August 1st through the 3rd, I'm at the House of Comedy in Minnesota. Um, And I'm going to try and work on Edmonton as well. Get up there and go international on that ass. Uh, Doers, I just want to say thank you for all the positive feedback. I can't. I'm blown away. I'm getting messages, emails every day. Um, and I'm glad that you really like the show. I really love the show as well. Um, please subscribe, rate, and review the Honeydew Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, the website is thehoneydewpodcast.com. Um, email me at honeydewpodcast at gmail.com and follow the show on social media. On Facebook, we are the Honeydew Podcast. On Twitter, at honeydewpod. And if you are new to the show, welcome. Um, what we're doing over here is we're laughing in, in the face of adversity, having some fun with the not so fun times. It is a pleasure to introduce my first guest here at Studio J. You guys know him from your mom's house, a fan favorite. Please welcome Josh Potter, everybody. What's up, dude? Thanks for having me. Thank you for being on the honeydew here. No uh, problem. I live are, here, so it's yeah. like it was easy. Easy you're, you're perfect for this fucking show, bro. <laughs> yeah. You are fucking I don't perfect. know because... <laughs> I think about, I'm the thing that's in the kitchen looking at the honeydew going to be like, at least you get to be on the table. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like whatever they don't bring out, that's me. I'm that That's thing. you? Yeah. I'm back in the kitchen being like, fuck you, honeydew. At least you get the table, dude. Like, like I don't that, even get out there. I'm in the kitchen. All that real wet, like mayonnaise <laughs> macaroni yeah, yeah. salad some shit that with cooks some like, ham Ooh. chunks in it. They're leaving <laughs> yeah. in the back. <laughs> Something they scrape off the top. Well, before we get into your story, will you please um, let everyone know where they can find you on social media, plug and promote anything you want. I, uh, I'm on Twitter at J underscore Potter and I'm on uh, Instagram, Josh underscore Potter. They should match, but they don't. And so that's where you can find me and you can uh, see all my upcoming shows on there. I want to thank everybody who came out to the Hollywood Improv three days ago. It was a barn burner. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting that one out there. Hopefully I'm not lying when this comes out. And if I am, it's don't consider it fake news. But uh, yeah, I, I do. If you did come, thank you. Anything else? I'm just you putting want? that one out futuristically. Yeah. That's all I got. No, hey, I, we we I, did that uh, before. We pre-recorded a, <laughs> a thank you to Bridgetown message, and then it fucking aired before we went to Bridgetown. <laughs> <laughs> I am sincere from the future, but uh, at, I I'm just gonna be doing sets around LA the next couple of months. So look for those on my Twitter and on my Facebook or on my uh, on my Instagram. I don't have Facebook, so I I had hit you up and said. You know, you're perfect for this. Will you please send me a list of stuff you'd like to talk about? You sent me a list. Was gonna... it too short? No, God, no. Okay, good. Um, but I first met you two years ago. Um, it was a bucket list show for me because I was in Maryland visiting family. I had my daughter with me and, and Tom had come into the Lyric and was I was flying out that day. And he's like, you got to stay and do this. And there were like 12 things that happened, had to happen. I had to be back by a certain time. I had to, you know, switch flights, all that shit. And it lined up and I was like, Oh, I got to do this. So I went down to do it, which was amazing. And that's where I met you. Yeah. And I didn't know, I had never heard of you, hadn't met you. Oh yeah. I was a no, I mean, I, I had heard of you, but I didn't like, you know, I was trying to be like cool about it. You know what I'm saying? You're fucking great. But I, of course, immediately saw your glasses. Oh, yeah. And you busted my balls. 
So when I went on stage, I said, give it up for Josh. He ain't going to see shit, but he's definitely going to hear it. <laughs> and that was our introduction to each other. Yeah. Well, and then also, after I was done, we went and smoked a joint back in the garage. Where yeah, we got baked in smoke. that woodshed or whatever the fuck And I was. started asking you all these questions about your life. <laughs> and two years later, here you fucking are. But it's re- some revisionist history, I think, because... I had not busted your balls because I was being like, oh, man, oh, I know really? who Ryan Sickler was. And Tom had been like, yo, he said you're like super old. I forget what the joke was, <laughs> oh, but it was it like was, about how you were like 70. I'm stoking the fire. He said, uh, I asked Josh how old you were. <laughs> and he said 74 or something like that. And like he made it like outrageous. <laughs> like and I and we never had it, but he did that in front of me. And then, yeah, you were busting my, my chops after that. And Tom loved both of them happening. He loved the 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 reaction you had and everything. He loved that whole thing. I so yeah, like, I never me... busted your balls about, about no, anything because I was all ball? like, yeah, I don't know. Oh. I'm not a ball buster. I don't have the energy. You know no. what I mean? So yeah, I just, but that was his joy for that, for that interaction. Yeah. Cause I was like, <laughs> well, if he's going to do that, I'll just take it to the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 No, you know, he loved it. Um, I loved it too. I mean, it was funny. <laughs> so I, I want to talk to you cause you told me some fascinating things. We started talking about your site, your vision. Yeah. 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 So why don't we just start? Because you said you were born with this. So let's start. Yeah, at I birth. forget that people like don't realize something's up. You know what I'm saying? They see like these glasses and they're like, that fucking hipster. You know what I mean? But uh, no, I was born four months premature. Four? Yeah. It wow. Was, well, it was like three and some change, but it was like, I'll round up because like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me have that. Take four. Give me that fourth week. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I was born early and I lived, which is the miracle in itself, according to my mother. Uh, but they say the eyes are like some of the last things to form on a, on a baby. So mine weren't like fully formed. And, uh, so when I came out, you know, time went on when I was two, my parents started noticing like Sesame street was on and Josh is really into it. Like he's right up on the fucking TV. You know what I was like? like they're like, man, is he just like really into that shit or something up you know what i mean and then they took me to a doctor and figured out that i need glasses already at two at two yeah so it just and as i grew what happens when you're nearsighted if you're getting is that what you are early, you're nearsighted? Yeah, yeah yeah your eyes become oblong and as you grow they also grow more oblong and that's like it being it's more making nearsighted. me want to blink a lot right now when you say that i feel it in my eyes yeah right so like uh down the road i found out in seventh grade when your eye gets a little too oblong, I also had a disease called macular degeneration, which deteriorates your retinas. And mine were growing so oblong that it ripped the retina. It tore it. Damn. And that doesn't hurt or anything, but it's like, so I woke up in the morning and I had basically just like a brown curtain starting to emerge from the left field of my vision to the right in one eye. And I thought I got like soap in my eye at first. You You remember this clearly. Oh, for sure. I remember the whole day. I remember like, the feeling in the morning going like, man, I got soap in my eye or some shit, you know, like, I'm just like, you know, when you get something in your eye in the shower or whatever, you get that like purple splotchy shit going on. I thought it was that. So like the whole day I'm like, man, I really fucked my eye up. You know what I mean? Like, and then by like fourth period, I was like, something's what up color here. Is yeah, Big Bird? Yeah, 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 yeah. What dude. color is Big Bird? I'm right up on it, man. I was He's in, blue. And that's Cookie Monster. I job. was in science class and I go, I don't know what's going on here, but I can't see all you of a sudden. Ra- you raised your hand to say that? Because the thing kept getting worse. It kept like, it was like a curtain was closing over my eye. So I went up to the teacher. I go, I got to, can I go use the, the bathroom for a second? And I ran to a pay phone because we didn't have cell phones yet. I was in seventh grade and I ran to a pay phone. I called my mom. I'm like, something's Remember up. when you knew phone numbers? Oh, dude. I knew everybody. I don't know. I don't know. I barely know mine now. Everyone's just plugged into my phone. <laughs> I have a funny story down the road here about forgetting the phone number, actually, because of the phone All right, we'll cell come phone back thing. But yeah, no, for sure. I, uh, but yeah, so I call my mom on a pay phone and I tell her like, something's up here like really bad. I don't know what's going on. It was, I was losing my vision completely in my eye. And so we went to my eye doctor immediately because like my mom called him and she, he's like, get the fuck in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, Wait, I go, hang on, brown yeah, curtain. Yeah. Get the fuck yeah, in yeah. here. What? <laughs> you knew, dude. My eye doctor. I've had the same eye doctor since I was a kid, and this guy is the like is the shit. Like I love this guy. Like when he retires or dies or whatever, I'm fucked. I'm never gonna have a good enough eye doctor ever again. I feel like. But uh, so yeah, he's like. He brings me and he knows right away. But what so, shit is. so from two to seven, are you experiencing? This isn't seven, seventh grade. So seventh grade, I'm, sorry. I don't know, 13 so, or yeah. something like that. So between two and 13, 
are you noticing gradual differences? Oh yeah, or is it just every time boom, I grow, boom? or like you know, you know when you get new shoes and shit as a kid, how often you get new shoes and shit? That was me with like thicker ass lenses. Really? <laughs> They're like it was like oh you, you're up to a seven or an eight, time to get a new fucking prescription, you know. And my dad would be like fuck, you know how many omelets do I got to fucking cook to pay for this <laughs> shit? Was your dad yeah. a chef? You know he just worked. He used to own diners. No, he and just shit. cooked. He just cooked omelets. He cooked diner diner food and shit because he owned diners and stuff. But yeah. He'd be like, fuck, how many fucking hot dogs I got to sell to fucking... He's got him to Kurt Rambis's last year, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that dude, I saw him on a playing card one time, and I was like, that's my hero right there. <laughs> that dude's my fucking hero. Him and Horace Grant. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Represent. The Horace Grant's yeah. next year already? <laughs> Jesus Christ, yeah. man. We just, we just fit him uh, for the dude, Kurt Rambis. I remember I played soccer and shit, and you know soccer, right? Of course I know. And I was so, all yeah, I played. I only played like I wasn't very good. I think I was kept around for like team morale. <laughs> I was just like they, like, they, the kids in the locker room, like we're like this dude's. I love this dude. And I'd be like, hey, make some laugh. It you was know, ten they're, on eleven when, when you were on the field. <laughs> when they're running, I was never on the field. That's the whole point. I was. I literally was never on the field, and I can't believe I made the team over people that were better than me. But I really think it was because like the other players liked having me around. And when we'd run, they're like, the coach was like, well, they're running, they're laughing when they're running the perimeter. So who gives a shit as long as they run them or whatever, you know what I mean? So they kept me on the team both years, varsity. And I sucked. I mean, I was like, I was decent, I thought, but I had glasses. And I remember playing with glasses and like every now and then I'd, you know, take a header wrong or something and I'd lose my glasses and I'd have to like grab them. Or I was really good at knowing the spatial awareness of where my glasses was somehow. You're not doing that Velma like no, all around. No, I wasn't like, shit. Oh, oh, like fucking dribbling yeah. past you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a. So I would be able to catch him or something. Like I was really aware of them being on my face. But you so didn't one have day, the like band that goes behind your neck or anything. I though. didn't. No, I wasn't a fucking geek, bro. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I lost my croquis. Yeah, where's my croquis? Dude, my mom <laughs> my mom would preach croquis to me all the time. She's like, you're going to lose it in the oh, pool. Oh, you're going to yeah. lose a wave's going to come and your just life's over. Just put this herring bone around it. Tie it on each end, man. That's all we My got. mom would fucking be like, please. She'd beg me to wear the croquis. You know what I'm saying? Because this shit is not cheap. And I didn't realize that as a kid. You know, you think you just get glasses because you need them. It's like 500 you don't think eggs that shit's right there, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you don't have any fucking omelets. I have this move for your fucking glasses. Uh, so I became aware of that at a young age eventually because I was reckless with them. But uh, I i mean, shit, I'm protective of them now, even though I kind of treat them like shit. But uh, but yeah, anyway, I got those rec specs one time. My dad suggested, he's like, let's protect these glasses, get those rec specs. Took one ball, the rec specs broke. Nah, my glasses never broke <laughs> fucking once, the dude. My glasses are ha- more hardcore than rec specs. Shit's made for the take a beating. And it yeah, broke. dude, it was hilarious. It was. I, I remember the first, the very first ball that hit me in the face. They snapped in half. I was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" My glasses never broke, dude. Never. And then we out there just like running with one up, holding one up, and running. And oh, shit, dude, and I went and got my glasses out of my bag. I was oh, like, yeah. "Fuck this shit!" My dad's like, "Great, another G down the drain or whatever." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 whatever those fucking things. That shit's like NASA shit. Those fucking rec specs, you know? I mean, All right, fuck. so you let's go back. You go to the yeah. doctor. You're seeing the brown curtain. He says, "Get the fuck in here." He knows yeah. what this so is. He knows what, what that happens. shit is. And you're in so seventh grade. I need to be rushed into surgery immediately. Right there on the spot. More or less the next morning. That's got to be frightening for everybody. Oh, dude. Are you an only child? No, I have a little sister. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, we're all freaked out. And so it's like, it's a surgery that is relatively routine. It's a retina repairment. It happens, but it's not routine in a 13-year-old child. It's routine in an elderly person, (laughs) you know? Yes. This is something that happens to old people. So when their eyes are becoming more decrepit. And I had it happen at 13. So the doctor's like a young dude, kind of like mavericky guy. They sent me to a specialist because like my, my general eye doctor can't perform a surgery. So I have to go to a specialist. This dude is like young. He's fucking like on it. He's telling me news that is so grim sounding, but just straight laced. And I'm like, I respect it to a degree, but I'm also 13. So I'm like, this is, a, this is frightening, you know? Cause he was just stone cold, like, this is what what's, happens. Yeah, this is the, like, he's saying shit like, you know, if this surgery doesn't work, you know, you're going to be looking at being blind. And, uh, is your mom in the room during this? Yeah. My, my mom was there. And so like, he's just telling me all this. I've never had an adult really just lay it out like that. 
and he was just like straight up with me. And he Listen, was, three and, years from now, you're going to be wearing a prescription welder's mask. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But, you know, you know, I mean, like, if this doesn't take or whatever, he was telling me, like, what the rehab's like and just, like, the long haul that was ahead and all this shit and just laying it out. And it was just so frank. And this guy, I'm like, he knows what he's doing. Like, I kind of trusted him or whatever. And he and he did. And he actually asked me, he's like, this is a unique thing. Can I film this? Really? Or, like, journals and shit or whatever, like, medical, whatever the hell. And I was like, dude, yeah, I mean, I don't care. I was 13. I was like, I thought that was kind of hyped. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's dope. Yeah, film it. I'm like, I'm going to be on a fucking so this, museum. This is What's out up? there somewhere? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Because this guy, after he did that surgery, he like went and started working at it. We're not going to believe a... this. We dug up the footage from the <laughs> surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at that surgery oh, right yeah, now. I thought you were going to be like, Dr. Selix is here. Chew up the left eye first. <laughs> oh, shit. No, but he, he used, I think he used that to like get a cool job or something because he ended up moving somewhere else in like, climbing up the medical ladder or whatever and uh so how long how long are you under like how long is this procedure i don't really know how long you're under but it's like a full-on like you go into the hospital anesthesiologist and shit and then like i learned uh because by the way spoiler alert i end up having this surgery four more times <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah so and are you out for like a few days weeks no i'm months? out like i wake up at the end of the surgery and like then i then i'm like, i don't mean you know, out under i mean oh, out of commission oh dude you so <laughs> out for three weeks of i don't want to get it i don't want to get too into the weeds so steer me off course if it's too like medical or whatever but like what they do is they basically suture your eye with like a it's like a tire almost around your eye so that it can stop growing more oblong and it can keep your retina they put, intact they like implant that in there and yes. like sort of keep it after they seal the uh the tear they put this suture around it like a tire almost to contain it and since i was so young and it was a fresh tear it was just one fresh ass tear and it wasn't like splattered and it was an easy like so you know what i'm saying so you could repair it and then you could suture it and hopefully contain it forever and so <laughs> that one was done, right? And then, so the rehab for that is to keep the suture in place and to keep the thing from the tear from reopening, they inject your eye with a gas bubble that acts as a what? paperweight. It's and, and it stays in there? It doesn't pop? No, it's, it, it's it, as time goes on, like as weeks go on, it slowly, what does uh, that feel what's like? the word, goes away. It's painful dissipates. as hell. Dissipates? Yeah, dissipates, yeah. I so like... Uh, you have to lay the way the, so that it can float to the top and be pressed against that seal. So whichever way it is in your eye, you have to lay like a magic eight ball shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had to lay on my fucking face for this one for three, four weeks. And then like I can, I had to keep my face that way as often as I can. Cause like any time spent upright or whatever, takes away from the pressure of that on the seal so it could fuck it up you know what i mean did you do something like get like a massage table with a hole in it and just put a tv down no there? i just straight up slept on a bed with like a pillow and shit and like uh just slept and they gave me percocet so i mean it was kind of cool <laughs> yeah. yeah dude it was like i i, I hate you laugh i hate those fucking oh things. dude i fuck oh they make me throw it up turned and into a, and... a thing uh, it, uh, it, usually does. <laughs> it usually does for most people <laughs> because i again i had this surgery count them four more times <laughs> five so, total you've done yeah, that because then uh to get out of all of it all of it uh because i feel like i'm boring boring you with no this you're not so you're, you're seventh grade you've done the surgery you're out for a few weeks so that one's recouping. set right after but, i recoup but what is life like after that it's kind of cool like i'm 13 and like are you still playing you know, the sports rehab. yeah like after a while because it was so young i could get back into shit i remember it sucked because i'm i actually was kind of good for my school in eighth grade for soccer comparatively so i made modified and they were the gonna make could see or compared to the kids in the school <laughs> <laughs> that could see yeah fuck those kids you got two you got fucking two eyes you motherfuckers coaches always use you as oh, yeah. if Josh just dribble right past you he don't even know where the fuck the field he's is he's got heart <laughs> that's Man, why we keep him he's got one that's big why he's heart in one eye <laughs> so, one big heart one good eye so uh but I was I was I made modified I crushed the tryout I scored in a scrimmage like three goals it was crazy and I was like I made the fucking team I'm gonna make captain of this team and because my gym classes were, I, I wasn't allowed to join gym at a certain threshold in the, in the year. Because you're, oh, just the day. Because I was out because gotcha. like, of the rehab shit. I, uh, 
I couldn't play modified, and that that sucked. You know, I would have started on that ship. But then, you know, as I, time went on, I gave less of a shit about soccer. It was just more for fun. Was that the only sport you played? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I played bowling, too, actually. I was varsity bowling. <laughs> varsity bowling? I, yeah, I, I don't think we even had a bowling team. We had a golf team, but I don't think we had a bowling team. Yeah, it was dope. You just, uh, it was a bunch of dudes, like, that you probably don't want to hang out with because uh, they're playing, they just play magic cards. Remember that shit? Do you ever, you ever fucked with that? Probably, but mm-hmm. uh, they'd play these magic cards. It's, it's like Dungeons and Dragons, you shit. And I, I, I grew up bowling with my grandpa. So I just was like, well, I'm decent at this. So I want to see if I can make the team. And it's like free bowling. So yeah, it was like, and you get a varsity bowling, letter. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, I'll get a varsity letter freshman year. I, I don't know why I thought that was cool. Uh, I was a dork, I guess. But um, so I did it for one season and I made it. <laughs> and I got on the team and everything. And it was like just a winter of going to bowl after school pretty much every day. And is your vision slowly getting worse again after this? And yeah, when like do you start seeing so that? Throughout, like, when I, once I get to high school, sophomore year, it happens again in the right eye this time. And this one's not, I don't know that the cut was so clean, but the doctor wasn't as good, this new doctor. He fucked it up. And so after that Ow. one, I don't know. Oh. I, I'm not, a, I'm not the, a surgeon, so I don't know what he did inside of the surgery. But when I came out of it, I, wasn't, I couldn't see as well. And I had like, uh, it almost looked like someone put like Vaseline over my eye or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like it was like a, looking through a weird but filter. Did, did you notice that brown curtain again? Is that yeah, where that's you're what like, happened, so yeah. every time it's that, that at least mm-hmm. for these two times, like now I know what this is. I got to get Yes. I knew this time what it was. Take you right in again. Yes. And so I, uh, I'm a sophomore in high school this time. So it's a little more complicated with school and stuff, which sucked. That part sucked. As opposed to when I was in like seventh grade, the school was like, he's fine. He's not retarded. He can get to eighth grade, you know? So they just kind of let he me just slide. Can't see the there was he like can't four see months. The yeah, I was like four months I was out and they were just like, whatever, you know? Because they're like, he can, he can do seventh grade math. Um, but high school was a little bit more of, I just start doing like, I had a tutor, a math tutor have to come over and shit. So I was just like ready to fucking, I was just taking those Percocets like a savage, dude. Because back then they did not fucking regulate it, it seems. It seemed. I was taking them definitely more than I should, and they kept refilling it. So I was like. For how long? How- uh, well. Months? So that one was for like a few months, and then I had it happen again in the same eye because that doctor sucked. He fucked it all up. Did you I go had, back to him? No. Okay. He was gone. I went to another doctor, and this doctor, because now it was, it was already damaged in there. So this doctor, the suture's in there and shit, and now it's still having tears but now it's like think of it like wallpaper instead of like one tear now you're getting like fucking you got that shower on too long or some shit and you got like parts oh, peeling yeah. everywhere and shit so you have to go in and be like bzz, bzz, bzz. oh man so make, make me want to rub my eyes <laughs> <laughs> so i went in there make for me the, blank heart. i went in with this other doctor dr Wu or wang or some shit and uh i thought he was gonna be dope because you know he was an asian guy i thought it was gonna be sick but he sucked dude he was straight up trash he was the trashiest doctor. He was worse than number two? Well, this guy at least admitted it. The last guy didn't admit that he fucked up. He's like, that's as good as it gets. And I was like, I don't think so. I want Dr. Seligson back here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this guy, uh, you know, he fucked it up though. He too. Dr. He was Wu? Like, he straight up was like, it didn't like the, I, so I went through the surgery, went through the rehab and then he goes, it didn't work. We have to do it again. <sighs> so then I went to the surgery, went through the rehab. So now you're on four. This is number yeah. four. And then I come out of it. He goes, didn't work again. So now, what it, when he's saying it didn't work, what what was supposed to happen that wasn't happening? The um, repair of the tear didn't take. So it just like that gas bubble thing wasn't working, and so they'd have to like redo the suture or redo the um, repair of the tear. You know, like laser it up again or whatever. So I got some good news. Uh, it took bad news. You're Asian. <laughs> You're now Asian. I would have taken it, too. <laughs> I bet. Shit. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, I would have taken that shit. Probably have a Netflix special. So, <laughs> so you are now on four number surgery, number four. Right. So now it, he goes, second time he goes, didn't work again. And he's doing it again? Well, he or goes, do you say, the second time that. he goes, I have done all I can. He admitted that at least. I mean, he's he like, can't do a better job. Yeah, he's like, I tried twice. I can't. It wouldn't be responsible for me to like try it again at this point. He's like, your options are this. It's over. <laughs> or, you said that? I mean, not in so many words, you know. And uh, it was that or it was go to the Cleveland Clinic and go to one of their specialists because he's like, 
a better doctor than me basically is what he essentially said. So my parents, I, I, I was ready to tap out. I'm like, it's done. Give me a fucking dog, whatever. Let's go, you know? And uh, my parents were like, let's check this doctor out in Cleveland. And now we're going to fucking Cleveland for doctor's visits and shit. Yeah. And, and I'm in college, is dude. This Buffalo. is me in college. Three hours. And I'm in college at this point. It's like sophomore year of college. It's the summertime. That's already been uh, six weeks now with these other two. And so now I'm like, now I'm going to fucking Cleveland and shit. So like I, uh, I get there and I'm like already thinking this shit's futile. Like there's no way this is going to work. It didn't work. Like what are we trying to save here? And I'm blind by the way, at this point, like that's, that's how we no find out it doesn't not. work. I can't see out of it. They'd come and bring me in. They go, let's check. Uh, here's can they, they, you know, cover my good, my good eye. And they'd be like, <laughs> read, can you read the line? I'm like, I can't see the room dog like i can't what sign you know what i mean like it is black do you have the lights on because i can't see shit so then it became so like what what do you see at that time at least do you see no, any dude compared to nothing i've like learned black when you close an eye well, what or i learned is a little light through their tests that they then they start shining bright lights on you and shit like can you see this light swoop or like I'm waving my hand, you know, can you see which direction, you know, stuff like that. You do little tests and you've learned, like I learned, like now if I cover this eye and I go like this and I like really look hard enough, all right, I can see like there's something moving in the blackness. You know what I'm saying? Like it's gone. Like it's not uh, viable. And so uh, that's the bad one. This is the one I had in seventh grade. It's staying strong for now, like knock on wood. You know what I mean? So like it's kind of weird walking that tightrope knowing that's all you got left over there. And then it's like stick time and shit. You know, I got to get a fucking, how do the, I live near the blind people college here in LA and I see blind people walking with such confidence all the time. I don't even walk that way. And I can kind of, <laughs> I, I can kind of see and I don't Fuck walk that way. Fuck your dog, man. Dude, I, I'll see them like going like <laughs> with their fucking stick, just walking down the street, like la, 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 smiling like, whistling and shit. And, shit. Yeah, and I, I'm like, I run into a fucking pole and I'm like, Jesus Can't Christ. walk around my place in the dark. Fuck. So I don't know how that's going to transition if that happens, but, uh, so, and then I got to learn Braille. I don't know. Did you learn Braille? No. You think I'd preemptively do it, right? Yeah. I I should do it. I'm reading it at the ATMs and shit. Yeah. I don't know what it says. I don't know how, here's the thing I always wondered, like, I always go over and touch it. So like, how do you know where the Braille is on the ATM? Like, you know what I mean? When you go blind, you have to learn all the Braille spots, but first, you you ever see Braille on a thing and you go, how would the guy even know the signs there? Yeah. Like an elevator. Yeah. Because at ATM, they might say, you know, for hearing impaired or vision impaired, press this and then tell you there's Braille and you can feel it. But an elevator just sitting right down under the number. I got to do something where I have people helping me out when I'm blind because if I'm like in this state and I'm blind and I just have like my loner life, uh, I don't know what's going to go down. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know how that's going to work. Well, I remember asking you about driving. So, oh yeah, obviously that I was. Did. And I you, drove you, through all this. I was going to ask you: <laughs> Did you get a license, or did you just drive? So when I was sixteen, and you go in for your permit, right? Yeah. Uh, my eye doctor. You walk in there, just like no, no, no. <laughs> Turn around. Turn around. <laughs> you think you get out of here with a fucking? No, doctor? man. Uh, uh-uh. passenger uh, only. Go yeah. ahead. Next. The office for the handicap signs are <laughs> down the hall. I, uh, but no, so I go in. My eye doctor, by the way, told me, because we asked him straight up, like, should I drive? And he was like, yeah, you can drive. You're, he's like, there are people driving with worse vision than you. For real. This is, when this I, is what blew me away I when I met eyes, you. This, this is when the I first thing we eyes. talked about. I, didn't have, I only had one eye when I met you. This is back when I had two eyes, the doctor said this to me. And so... I was like, dope. Okay, cool. So I go in there and I, I straight up tell my dad, like, we weren't like up on my prescription because I never really bitched. Like, I can't see perfectly. You know, like I would just be like, after a while, my parents would be like, you didn't see that, did you? I'd be like, nope. And they'd be like, all right, time to up the script. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like it'd get bad because <laughs> I didn't want to be like a pest. And it also was a pain in my ass to go fucking get checked and shit. So I never talked about it. I just deal. And uh, so I told my dad, I go, dude, I... I can't read that fucking, they're asking line three, line seven and shit. And I can't fucking read that. He goes, all right, it's a F four, six, and seven. You, He's like, are you getting this? Six. Are you four, getting yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Okay. Cause we were listening. Like, we're like, okay. So they asked him three, they asked her four. They seem to be rotating between three and four. So like just memorize both. And so I'm going up there. I'm like four, seven, five. and I get up there and then I like, 
you know, I probably could have got a fucking Emmy or some shit because I was like... Line five. I'm like, four? <laughs> you know, I'm acting like I'm squinting it out and shit. <laughs> Man, I crushed it. So I gave me a license and uh, guess you what? Just, you just had... All you had to do was say those like six letters and yeah. that's it. And so like, I knew that's that I was... I was tempting fate, I knew. And so the next time, you know, when you have to renew your license, I was like, Jesus, I'm not going to be able to do this again. And my dad's not going to come with a 20-something-year-old guy to get his fucking license redone so i talked to my eye doctor about it he goes i'll just write you a note yeah this is what you told me i did not yeah. know this was you can anyone can do this by I, the way yeah tell you want to forego the eye test at the dmv just go to your eye doctor and your eye doctor will vouch for you and just write like yeah you can drive and whatever your script is and then they, you give it to the fucking dmv at the eye check thing and they go all right cool and they stamp it and they don't get and that's fuck. it you don't have that's to it. take how the do you think test. old people fucking get through i had i had no idea and I, I doctor, no idea my eye doctor that. said, I'll never strip you of your independence unless I feel like you would put some other people's lives in danger. And, and, and I'm sorry, everyone, that he made that decision for y'all. But, uh, <laughs> but you're out there driving. Yeah, I don't drive anymore now that I live in L.A., actually. I stopped driving for the betterment of society. It, you, do, I mean, that's part of what it. close also, calls have you had Here's driving? the thing. Have I, you had accidents? I've had two accidents, but one was because I was a stupid 16 year old and I just was rushing to get to a place and I hit some ice and I rear ended a person. And the other one actually, and I did had you no... play it up when you got out? <laughs> well, no, because I didn't want them to, I actually, I would have been like, this I... just happened. No, you see here, this a... just happened. That's, Look at my eye. That's so interesting because I, <laughs> I did the opposite. I had to play it up the other way because I didn't want people to tell me I couldn't drive anymore. So I had to so act how, like, what did you do? I had to act like I really fucked up. I was like, oh, well, you know, uh, I was just really rushing and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, I don't have depth perception. <laughs> so that was the real crush. Trying to shake the guy's hand. You keep touching his chest. Dude, to me, all the time I do shit like that. I'll be like, for this beer, I'll be like. <laughs> Why is this guy punching me in my chest, man? Oh. Oh, it's right here. The mic. The, and I go up to a mic sometimes. I'll put it in the stand. I'll be like, huh. oh, shit, okay. But, uh. Yeah, so I played it up the other way. But that was the only accident that was my fault. The other one, I got T-boned. Guy ran a red light. But that was the only two Damn. accidents. Now, was I dinging up my car on some poles and some shit <laughs> once in a while? Of course. And I don't some have all right eye, and... <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, dude, I remember like one time I, uh, oh, I was, uh, when I, I was like, after my parents split or whatever, I was living with my dad for like a little while. And I remember I came home like I just new place and shit and i turned the corner in the driveway and i scraped the car against the house the and house like fucked up the like paint on the concrete of the foundation you know but it fucked up my car even more what than were it you fucked driving? up the house and it wasn't my dad's house he didn't give a shit it was the landlord who gave a shit i was driving a honda crv all right and uh i just scratched the whole side of it and i didn't really give a shit about the cosmetics of my car and my dad's just like jesus you know he asked me he's like what's going on here you drinking and stuff like when you're driving and stuff i go dad I have one motherfucking. <laughs> I love the, the fact. Yeah. The fact that this shit doesn't it wasn't happen. even a consideration. Daily. It's not even on the list. Yeah, and he because I don't is know. You drinking? Yeah, like you do well, the because Percocets? that wasn't out of no, the yeah. Dad. That wasn't out of the realm either. I mean, you going through some shit right now? Yeah, Dad, I am. Is it? it what is it? It's the eye, Dad. Oh, yeah, okay. dude. I do notice everything on the. You couldn't drive in England. <sighs> It's well, all coming the opposite way. It's no, all it's this eye. So like, yeah, I'd be on the other in side. In England, you'd have to be using like your right eye. I feel like I could do it regardless, dude. You think so? Yeah, dude. I got good at. I got. I got fine at it. Like I, I drove as an adult, uh, constantly and never got into an accident. Now my real problem was like getting in trouble with keeping up my car, like maintaining my car, uh, to the point of it being legal to drive, and that caused uh, some issues in itself. So that's the other reason. That's the. It's a two pronged reason I don't drive. A, eyes, B, because I don't enjoy the responsibility of a car. I feel like it's a needy child and I fucking hate it. You have to put fucking oil in it and gas and fucking take it for its tires. And it was a nightmare. I hated it. And, uh, you just said take it for its tires. <laughs> Whatever, dude. They fucking <laughs> suck. Cars suck. You got to get all these forms and shit. You got to get insurance. You got to get your registration, your inspection. Fuck all of it dude i can't i'm not good at that shit and i've and i know that sounds like a lazy or it's like it 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 definitely fucked with my brain like because it was like am i lazy am i just irresponsible but it was like no i just hate these fucking machines i don't respect them and i just don't 
I'm going to try what it's like to not own one. And now I don't own one. And it's like a weight has lifted off my shoulders, dude. It is like unbelievable not having a car. Did you have a good driving record or a bad oh, driving record? A terrible <laughs> driving that's the, that's the That's the other reason, really. Because, okay, so what was, I'll, uh, I'll yeah, connect the dots here please. for one second. After I go to Cleveland Clinic, uh, the doctor there is dope. He's like fucking Maverick from Top Gun. He's like, I, I said to him straight up, I go, uh, hey man, what you know, if this doesn't work out, like what's my life looking like? Give me the fucking flat skinny. Cause he was like a cowboy. He'd tell me straight up. He's like, close both your eyes. <laughs> yeah. He goes like that. Well, no, cause it's like, <laughs> we're talking glass eye and shit. I'm like, what's that? What's no. that? Like? Yeah, dog. So, I had a neighbor that had a glass eye and he used to take that shit <sighs> out. It was a, he used to pop that out and you could see the fleshy like little oh man he i used, used to, to do a joke about like the potential trip of getting us that. out we were like ah oh, he was that's the thing i'm gonna be dude. the weird fucking guy with the glass eye who pops it out at bars for push fun. Like, in your yard out how am i gonna get laid ever again i'm like in a sophomore in college and I it's like you're gonna get a glass you, listen, eye there's someone for everybody oh I yeah but who wants the you're someone a bucket, you're a bucket list bro you're a bucket list not for bait like yeah it's like there's someone for everybody but sometimes that someone is a fucking discard also you know what i'm saying so it's like yeah i mean yeah so i don't want that i don't i'm fucking i am a virgin at this point by the way how old still a sophomore in college and this deterred me from being able to get laid i didn't get lose my virginity till 22 it's a a tragic thing But, but uh i so college i go back right and i'm blind now in one eye and i say like this shit is a waste of time meanwhile I started working in radio and that was another reason why those surgeries sucked because I was starting to get traction. I was getting airtime. I was getting on the air and this deterred that also. So what did the doctor say when you were like level with me and just be sure? Well, he's gave me all that glass eye shit. Like you got to maintain it. You got to fucking take it out. And it's like, your life's going to be like this. And he painted the picture of being a guy who has a glass eye. It was just a glass eye was the only option. That would have been the next step if it didn't work. About a patch. No, because I mean, cheaper for a pet. The thing is, like, the eye itself would die, and it. Oh, and, and you have starts, to th- You can't leave it in the like, body. If you can't, if it, if it didn't, if the sur- surgery. Now at this point, we're not trying to save my sight anymore. We're just trying to keep the eye as a living organism inside of my my head, essentially. So even though you don't have sight, it's still the it's still the goal is to working within the body. Yeah, the goal is to keep the eye alive so that I can keep it in my eye or in my head. And then they can, uh, if, you know, stem cell research or something progresses or there's like something that they can do down the road, hopefully medical technology will catch up with my issue and then fix it. So that's what we're trying to save it for is the hope of that, which is so fucking dumb anyways, right? Like you're like, oh, cool. Okay, cool. I'm doing all this for like the hope of the future. We, let's take it out. We're going to freeze it. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. <laughs> they might as well paying. be like, we're going to send it to Mars yeah. and it's going to come it's back. $40 and tell a you. month. And we keep it here in <laughs> yeah. this air conditioned, uh, environmentally friendly case. <laughs> and hopefully some stem cell research goes yeah, back. Yeah. That would be great, guys. That's Put your eye back in, man. That's essentially what they did, but with my skull. And uh, <laughs> so I tell the doctor, I go, what are the chances that I'm getting a glass eye? Flat out. And he goes, I'm pretty fucking good at this. He said those words. I'm and, pretty you know, fucking good at this. Yeah, your yeah, doctors yeah. drop a lot of F-bombs Dude, all your this doctor, doctor totally. No, the other one was like straight lace button up. He never said Get fuck. the fuck in here right now. Yeah, yeah. No, that guy. Yeah, <laughs> I love that guy. He's, he's a G. So he said, I'm pretty uh, fucking good at this. Meaning what? Guessing what's going to happen? No, like the surgery. At the glass eyes. Like surgery? he's like, I'm a fucking surgeon at surgery. You know uh, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Like he was like, he had that swag. And I was like, dope. Okay. So I felt confident going in and then sure enough, he, he did a great job and it's still in there. It looks gross as this fuck. This was five, number five. He's number five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so that was the end of that. But so when I went back to college. So you say it looks gross. Let me see. It just looks cloudy to me. Let me see. Oh yeah. You can see. So he, he did this. Terminator shit. Yeah. He did this. This is him. But they did see that, you know, over time, uh, they took the lens out and then they're like, you don't need that. So they didn't put that <laughs> shit back in. <laughs> and so uh, my I eye looked throwing weird. shit in the trash. Dude, it was like, you know how you have the color part, you know, like your eye is like three What's layers. That? That's just your retina. Don't worry yeah, about yeah. that, man. It's like, yeah, it's like you're taking parts out of the hey, engine. Anybody see his iris? Has anybody <laughs> seen that? We don't, don't worry. You don't need that either. Where's the ball? All you need is the ball, man. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> so 
<laughs> they took that lens shit out and they're like, you don't need that shit. You can't see it. You anyway, don't need so, the lens, uh, the iris, the, yeah, yeah. Shit. So, the pupil's gone. I mean, we just need the ball, man. <laughs> this shit's a cataract. Though. <laughs> it's just a cataract. Yeah, it looks there. better than the fucking uh, shit that was underneath it. So I just keep that shit around. So are they prescribing you any marijuana at the time for cataract? Oh, no, that? there's Not none of that then, at the huh? time. It's all Percocets, baby. The all whole Percocets. fucking run through. And I'm, I'm, you know, this is before like the opioid ec- epidemic was like a... No one thinking. I'm not saying that I had nearly. You were the cusp of it. Well, I'm not. I'm saying like I could have definitely gone down that path, but I'm not nearly as like bad off as some people are out there as far as how hooked they were. Because like basically they just told me it's over, and I was like, "What do you fucking mean it's over?" And then I couldn't get any more, and then I just kind of like stopped. Really? You know That's I mean? how you got off of yeah, it? Yeah, like I never, I guess I wasn't that addicted if I wasn't going to great lengths to get them again. I just thought I'm never going to be able to get these again. So I just kind of like was an asshole for a few months or whatever. You know what I mean? And um, even when I've gone back on those things, like the whole thing that kind of I feel like helped me and made me go like, am I an addict was when I just didn't have availability. I didn't seek it out. It was always just when it was like thrusted in front of me and then I went hard. You know what I mean? Uh, And I could see myself going hard if I always had availability. (laughs) You know what I mean? The main line. Uh, But so I go back to school and I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do this shit. I'm already working in radio. I'm going for a communications degree. This shit's lame as fuck. So I drop out and I just went with my cousin to Europe for a summer and just did that shit. Cause I was like, I lost a fucking eye. I want to see some shit. And, uh, turns out it wasn't that like, you lost an eye before I don't you lost half your... that shit. I got so fucking, uh, yeah, I lost an eye before I lost my virginity. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. You lost an eye before you lost, lost your virginity. An, yeah, I never thought of it that way. Like a real pirate. <laughs> That's how you get into pirate. Uh, that's that's pi- how you become a captain. That's it right, right there. there you man. get a parrot and shit. Fuck your hook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so how you're twenty? So how old were you when you had sex? You said twenty two. And how do you meet this girl? I was on the radio and she recognized me at a bar one night. And uh, was it, it a one night stand? Did you start? No, dating we actually this girl? dated. Yeah, we dated, and uh, she was older than me. How much and, uh, older? She was twenty six, and I was twenty two. Okay. And she had like at the time, Facebook is the uh, way of communicating, you know, it's the soup du jour and she didn't have any of that shit, which I thought was interesting. And so like, it was weird after we stopped talking, she just disappeared into the ether and like no girl has ever done that in any other aspect of my life. But when, uh, my virginity story is kind of wild. Cause I mean, obviously on your mom's house, we've been talking about like my lack of being able to ejaculate. And on my first time I did not. Wait, you can't ejaculate. I just don't. I mean, it's, it's all the perks. I know, dude. It's probably all that backed up Percocet all been you. That could be it too, dude. It could be the Percocets. I think like there's so many things it could be. I feel like it could be my eyes. The fact that I'm not seeing the woman like (laughs) in HD, you know, that also has been an (laughs) HD. You know what I'm saying? Just like, I'm not seeing it all. Like sometimes you got to take your glasses, come off and you're sweating and then you're just like, yeah. And then you have to get real close to see what it, what her tits look like. But, uh. You know, sometimes that's come in, come in handy, by the way. Also, it's been an advantage. I'll bet, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you just go like, woo, all right, who's it? Okay, cool, let's go. Feel around, all right, there we are. Uh, but, I don't know. So How's my hair look? I, <laughs> yeah, I don't great, know. Great, great, I don't great. know. How's this dress look? I don't know. But so no she goes like, because I'm having sex for the first time and I don't realize this is happening. Is this her first time? No. <laughs> Nah. She is well versed in the <laughs> arts of so much. So you're not, the, so, not even. I wasn't even her first blind guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she like shit. At least you have one eye. That last guy didn't have any. Uh, she goes though. She goes uh, like during the sex. She goes, "Have you? Did you come yet?" She was kind of a a curt, cold woman, <laughs> which I which is kind of like what I enjoy. But uh, she goes, uh, "So did you come yet?" And I go. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, and she goes, you would know. (laughs) You would definitely know. Yeah, and she was offended by that, and then, like, it became a thing, and then, like, down the road we broke up or whatever, but she also expressed to me that evening, she was like, what would you think about me uh, using a strap on on you? Pegging you? Yeah, and and then, I mean, I just, that was the, I was like, well, can I get to, like, doggy style first? You know what I'm saying? Like, I had just started this shit. Like, talk to me in, like, a decade. Maybe I'll be more open-minded. You know, but 
shit, right now I'm like, let's just practice missionary. Let me just call my doctor and see if there's (laughs) any way this could help my vision. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I already got, I already lost an eye. I don't want to lose the third eye too. You know what I'm saying? Like, (laughs) but if it's good for my eyesight, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I see out of that one afterwards? Because that'd be dope. 26 and hit me up on the pegging right away. Yeah, she was kind of cool. Yeah. So seemed like a real sweet girl. She was super, super cool. Yeah. I think she became a cop or some shit, but, uh, that sounds about right. I lost my mind though. After that shit, you know what I mean? I was just kind of diehard radio. I wanted my career to explode in that. And I dedicated myself to it and I dropped out of school and started doing that shit. So and, how'd you get into radio? Um, I got into radio through a sales internship during high school. And then I just never went home. I just, I like learned, I wanted to, so I would listen to the morning show which was Shred and Reagan. and they're still on there to this day. I did, is at the Buffalo show, yeah, right? Yeah, I yeah. did that to promote my album and said some really nice things about you. And they, oh, thank they you. said some great stuff about you too. Oh, dude, I owe everything to those guys too. I mean, like, including Tom and Christina. Like, I, I mean, I wouldn't even have met Tom if it wasn't for working on radio and doing comedy and stuff. So I started in sophomore year, I started in sales as an intern and then I just like would just stay. And I knew the show. And I always said to myself, like, my dream is to be on that show like those other guys on that show are, you know, I want to be one of those other guys on that show. And I, I did it within six months. Damn, <laughs> um, that's great. Hanging out there. And, uh, they didn't know I was in high school at first. And then when they found out, they were like, well, shit, uh, your internship, like it's kind of tough. You got, you got to wait till the summer until you can come back. So I so remember were you like, like a character on there or I started regular, doing on air stuff here and there, like stunts, you know, like okay. stunt boy shit. And, uh, my very first like thing that got me big in the in the show's eyes was I got shot with a taser by a police officer. What? Like one of the pronged yeah. ones. And uh Did you were you this on your before knees YouTube or... and shit too? If that video if we would have videotaped that, it would be like a bazillion hits because it was I was standing upright and no, then other cops hold me and then lower me as I was getting the electrocution. I've told the story before. One of my cousins is a cop and um he said and when they were tasering guys first, they were standing up and they were just locking up and falling on their <laughs> face and breaking trolling. their noses and knocking teeth out so now they put them on their knees when they well you're them. that, that this cop knew that fall, this cop yeah. knew that so he was like let's just lower him as we do it and then set him on the ground were you he shirtless a, uh no i had a station shirt on and it, it, it put hole punctured holes in yeah. the back of it shit they yeah. go to the back or the chest oh into my back yeah and right in the back i rode the five too they took me all the way five thousand watt volts or whatever the how fuck. i mean are you just I was 16, dude, and they were what like, "What if that brought your vision back?" Oh, dude, that's hilarious. Yeah, it couldn't have helped. Oh, uh, but I yeah, would I was, be worried it would fuck up the other eye. I'm I like, I'm not was, taking any voltage, guys. I'm trying to remember if I was 18 or not yet, because I, I don't want to get that in trouble or something. It sucked, but it was fun. I mean, I, I didn't, dude, seconds, and I'm on the radio. Right? It's five, it's uh, five seconds, I think. Five seconds, five thousand volts. Holy, and I'm shit, on the radio. That's a long time. And if I curse, you got to dump out of that shit, and it's gone. It's fucked. The moment's gone. And I knew this going in and I didn't su- say one curse word. You hear me start to, you hear me go like, Oh, fudge. You know, like, <laughs> like say shit like that. And, uh, for the bit. Yeah. For the bit dude. And they, and they even, they acknowledged it afterwards. Like he didn't swear once. And they're like, that's a pro. Were and that's you, when I got hired, dude. That's how you got <laughs> I got the started job. getting paid. I remember like also I was doing, I learned how to do production like on my own time. And I was teaching the person they hired to be the production assistant how to do production as the intern. I was teaching the person. And I remember one day, this is just how brash I was at 17 at the time or whatever. I go up to the boss and I'm like, you're paying this person that I'm teaching. Why don't you just pay me to do it? And then he goes like, all right. And they started to, and I had to go back to my school then and be like, I have to work a job in the morning hours. Can I get my classes shuffled to the end of the day? And my guidance counselor was super cool about it. He actually was like, yeah, that's a good thing for you. Like, I'll help you. I'll I'll help you do that. And he let me take like a final, like on the spot. That's cool. Yeah. For keyboarding or some shit. But so I started working there while I was in high school started being on the morning show and then it just kept uh, going as I went along. And then I just left there like two years ago. (laughs) So it's that recent you yeah, left yeah. there. I mean, throughout there, I left and came back, uh, f- for a job in Cleveland at one point. This and, is in uh, Buffalo when you say, yeah, when I was, right? I started in Buffalo and I stayed there for most of my radio life and on that show for it too, you know, throughout its years, 15 of them pretty much. So yeah, it was wild. Um, I love doing it, but it was just not viable to do. I mean, you know, you love where you came from as well. It's just not viable to stay there and do this kind of stuff, you know? Right. 
just gets to a point where it's like, do you want more or is this going to be your life forever? So you said, um, you had told me off mic that you've been arrested a couple oh, of times. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I was going to know. Is this during the radio times? Oh or? yeah. So I, um, I, uh, dropped out of school, went to Europe, came back, started doing comedy shortly did, thereafter. Did you get your diploma or did you no. get a GED or? I got a high school diploma. You did. I dropped out of college. Okay. So I, uh, I didn't get like a bachelor's or any shit like that. So I drop out of school. I start doing comedy. I'm like, oh, wait. Right. Uh, and I lost my virginity. I started doing comedy before I lost my virginity too, by the okay. way. That helped me lose my virginity, the confidence of doing comedy or whatever. So I, uh, I'm going out doing mics as often as I can. We're working in the afternoons at this point. So my hours are like super chill. Like I get to work at one, you know? So I'm going out every fucking night. It's like the best life. And I get a, I get a DWI when I'm like 23. How? Uh, pretty run of the mill. Like I got just pulled over after being at a bar and I didn't blow a ridiculous amount. It wasn't like I was swerving all over the road. It was just what, like, what'd they get you for? Because my, it was late at night and I was out on the road. And like when, <laughs> I don't know if this happens in LA or like major cities, but like when you're just the car on the road, they just look for something there to do. My tires hit a white line apparently on the off ramp. So, I mean, who's doesn't. Right. So that's what they pulled me over for. And I think they suspected that I was doing something. I was definitely ripping bowls in my car and shit the whole <laughs> fucking time. You While know? you're driving? Yeah, I'm just like, Pff, I didn't give, back then, dude, I did not give a fuck, dude. I remember I was leaving my friend's voicemails being just like, I'm a fucking highway cowboy, bitch. Like, I'm drunk, like, sometimes leaving these voicemails. The fact that I didn't get pulled over for a worse thing prior to this is is lucky to me. Um, so I, uh, you know, they pull me over. They make me do the breathalyzer and shit. I'm, by the way, bawling. Because I'm like, I've never been arrested. You're crying while you're doing it. I'm so sorry, sir. Please, is there any way? He's like, no, you're fucked. You're fucked, bro. Like, (laughs) they make you walk the line or any of that stuff. Oh, dude, no. So, like, that would uh, be unfair to do. They did do that shit. They did do that. They did? Yeah, dude. And I told them I tried. I tried to play up the eyes there. That was the one time I tried to play them up, dude. I was like, (laughs) my glasses. I'd be walking the wrong direction and shit. No, no, no. (laughs) Let's talk to me over here. I'm like, yes, sir. Where are you? Where are I hear you. Oh, was I was I going east? I would have played the shit out of that. But uh, yeah. So they. So I mean, what they did were, you they fail? They were cool though because I failed everything. I don't know. Uh the alphabet. All <laughs> Every that shit. T- yeah. So I was also nervous. I'm shaking like a leaf, you know. And I'm cold. It's cold. It's February or some shit. And uh, so the cops like they find basically what happens is, even though I'm a point oh nine, they find drugs in my car and they find like, what drug bowl just weed. You're done with the Percocets at this point. Yeah, I'm smoking a lot of weed though, and uh, there are, I'm also like living like a lunatic. There are empty baggies of weed just in my center console, like with f- you know weed fuzz, like Dorito, do, and, like you know what I'm saying, like Dorito the, dust. Yeah, like but weed dust, you know. And they're just like, oh my god, they're just like going through my because I just finish a bag and just put the fucking bag down in the console, you know, get a new bag, you know. And I was driving around smoking weed all the time. And uh, Are they, so they find Buffalo? all this shit. Yeah, they find all this shit, and they're like, "We found a bowl. We found actual weed, and all these." You bags. found that bowl? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I've been looking Thanks, for that. Dude. It, was dude, under, found, it was under the baggies. They found weed in my car that I'm like in my mind at first. I go sick, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, they keep that." Though. Yeah, that's right. That doesn't come back. Fuck. So, I uh, yeah. So the guy tells me he's like, "Listen, you have very mi- low amounts of weed." And just a bunch of empty bags. What are you doing? Like you're self-medicating or something? And I'm like, yes, sir. I'm just sad a lot or something like that. And he was like, uh, okay, do me a favor. Throw this weed in this bowl. Do your best uh, Jim Kelly impression. Throw it out on the highway there. And uh, we'll pretend like we didn't see that. For real? He said that to me. And I did that. And uh, and I did it. And he goes, uh, that was more, like, I did it like a now, bitch. Uh, now I'm going to get you for littering. Well, yeah. <laughs> That'd be some shit. That'd be like, That's going to be another $275 right there. No, but I, I, I'm, I'm sobbing and he's like doing me this favor. I'm like, thank you so much. I'm groveling at this point to the cop. Like, you're the man. Thank you so much. And I throw the fucking, I'm like, Ugh, I throw the bowl out there and just like rattles into the road or whatever. And he's like, that was more like Todd Collins. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I like laughed, but then I'm like, then he's like, okay, get back in the now, car. Thurman now Thomas go, is over there, get it and like, throw it over. It's so weird. Guard, right? I don't know if you've ever been around, but like, if you've no. ever, any interaction with a cop, like 
I don't know. It's just, I'm so stressed out around cops, but like in that moment you like share a laugh, but then you remember the dynamic immediately afterwards. Cause he's like, you're like, ha, 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 and then he's like, okay, get in the back. All right. Let me you know? cuff. Yeah, yeah. turn around. Let me cuff you. Exactly. I'm already. Yeah, exactly. Let's get these back on. But, uh, so that was the first time. And then like, as time went on while I was on the radio and shit, I, I was fucking around. I was partying and stuff. And I was also just like shitty with the car, like I mentioned. And so I was also poor for the record, by the way. Broadcast radio doesn't pay a lot of money, as it turns out. And it was my whole purpose in life at the time. And I'm like, what's next? I don't know. Now, so, what, what other gig doesn't pay a lot of money to start? Oh, comedy. Well, yeah, I combine the two. So yeah, I'm like, I'll sure supplement did. my income with two shitty incomes, and maybe they'll make one decent right. income. And, uh, you know, it worked out at times, but sometimes it didn't. And uh, so I just got shitty with my car. It, like, I remember I got like laps registration, laps fucking inspection. You like, do, it's but just you don't like doing it. Though. I'm a wreck. Makes sense. I'm, it's all racking up. I also can't afford it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it, I have to get XYZ fixed to get inspected. And I then have to take my car for the tires. I have to, I yeah, dude, dude, my friend, <laughs> my friend makes fun of me because I do say like, these are serious issues. Some of them like the water pump. I don't remember the fucking things that are wrong with my car at the time. Expensive things. Things are like $700. I'm like, well, fuck, we're gonna have to wait on that. But, uh, my buddy would make that joke. He'd be like, oh, you get a headlight out. You're taking it to the shop because you don't know how to do shit with that shit. He's yeah. like, oh, Josh's wiper's broke. Better call the fucking mechanic. <laughs> Schedule something for Wednesday. <laughs> get it in there. But because uh, I, I just didn't fucking know anything about it and give a shit. And uh, I would get pulled over all the time for like your, your inspections up, your blah, blah, blah. And then like I'd be like, okay, keep that court date in mind or whatever. And I'd fucking miss that shit. I'd fuck all that up. It became like a rat hole. You'd be, got, a, you'd be a no-show to court? I'd, I'd forget about it. Oh, bro. Dude, I know, right? Or I'd go, and then they'd give me the thing and be like, pay it by this day, and then I would be like, oh, fuck. And I'd be like, beyond that or whatever. And then it's like, when that happens, by the way, your license is suspended. Right. So you don't, sometimes you don't know until so they get you. You get pulled over that you your license is suspended. A lot of there's people no, don't know like, there's warrants out there for them until yeah, they get yeah. pulled over. And like, I'm moving around and shit. My mail's going wherever my license on my address is like my mom's house so it's like going there and your mom's house <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> now it is uh, uh so i fucking i fucked up i mean it was my 20s i was a retard i don't know I, I was bad at it so i was like not responsible or whatever and i fucked up so none many, of your shit's current too i fucked up too many times to the point where like i got i kept getting pulled over with a suspended license and they only let you go so many times and I was on the road getting pulled over. Like I remember I had a gig in Atlantic city and my girlfriend who had broken her leg, like fucking Joe Theismann style at a bar somewhere. Oh, isn't that wild? Dude, what? it was the wildest. She night. had a compound dude, fracture at a bar. This girl, this was a nightmare because me and my buddies did a show and then we did mushrooms and we were having a boys night. We went out to bars and shit and we we're like, let's go to one more bar. And so we picked this bar. We go there and Come stumbling out of the bathroom is my girlfriend. You have no idea she's there. Did not know she was there. There's only so many bars people go to in Buffalo. And so she comes stumbling out of the bathroom. Someone's like, isn't that your girlfriend? And I see her take a dive onto the ground like she was just shot. And I'm like, oh my God. And I run up there and she's like, my leg. She's not even making sense. She's like, my leg, my leg. I thought she was just super drunk and I'm on mushrooms. So I'm like, come on, like, let's walk it off, you know? Let's get up and try and, like, stretch or something, you know? Meanwhile, her fucking shit is baroque. Just from falling like that? She just fucking, I don't know, girls, man, with their fucking heels and shit. I don't know how that shit goes down. But so eventually, shit, we have to call a fucking ambulance. So anyways, time goes on. She still wants to come with me to this gig in Atlantic City because we were talking it up. Like, oh, I got a hotel room and shit. It's going to be fun. So she, thank God she did come, though, because I get pulled over and my license is suspended. And they're like, can't let you fucking drive. So eventually I just straight up uh, fucking tell the guy, I'm like, hey man, I got this gig. I need this gig to pay for these, t this, these things that my license is suspended for. Can my girlfriend drive you? Just give me the ticket. Because he wasn't going to arrest me. They let you go with the tow truck when they're a state trooper, I guess, or whatever. So he says, fine. He lets her drive. So she's driving now with this fucking broken yeah, ass leg. Right. Think, thankfully it was the left one. Oh, okay. I was going to say. So she's driving. We get to those tolls in Pennsylvania where it's like a bucket and you got to like, you're yeah. playing like a fucking carnival yeah. game yeah. to get that shit yeah. in there. <laughs> and she like opens the door for some reason to lean out and throw the change in the thing. And her leg comes out of place. 
No. Yes. The bone popped out? Because it wasn't like, it was like a dislocation. As long as waving. Like, yeah, dude. <laughs> waving like, him in from the so side. <laughs> at this time, she's well-versed at popping that shit back in, I Fuck. guess. Fuck. So she's like, God, and she's in pain. Mel Screaming. Gibson and leave the weapon over dude, here. Dude, she's shit. in the driver's seat of a toll booth, too. And just stop there. Screaming. Ah, the ah. car is like idle drifting, you know, like out into the road. And I'm like, ah. trying to fucking like, I'm like, push the brake. I'm trying to get the shit in park. She's popping you know? the bone part? No, it's not the bone. It's like, I don't know. Man, out of socket that, that or shit, whatever. It's like, this shit came disconnected. Oh, you know God. what I mean? Like, the whole thing was just out, you know? And so she would be like, blah. And uh, I don't fucking know what it was. I wasn't, I didn't care about her that much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 but, it, but so she fucking screaming and shit. And me and a guy that worked at the toll booth get my car pulled to the side and shit and like, Get her out of the car. Get her in the back seat. She takes like her Vicodin or whatever fuck pills she had. I take one because I'm like freaking out now. Like I'm like I'm gonna miss <laughs> this gig. Call. I need yeah, to calm dude. down. Got dude, that. so we get finally get to Atlantic City. I'm driving again. You know now I have yeah, to. You now have I kind of have to rush right? yeah. too because I'm gonna be late to ch- check in for this show at the fucking whatever that casino is that fucking shut down Revel. And uh, I'm, I'm I get to the fucking casino. I make it by five minutes, dude. And I have time to take a shower. I just cried in the shower. I'm like, fuck. Because I could have got arrested. I have to drive all the way back tomorrow and could get arrested. Like, if they just flash my plates or something, I could get fucked. So I was like a ball of stress that whole fucking time. And one time I got pulled over in a small town near my mom's house. And I got pulled over and they had to take me into a jail for a suspended a holding license. cell? Yeah, yeah. For like suspended a holding license? Center. Mm-hmm. And then you get the tow and the ticket and, and all that bail. on top of it. The bail. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they don't let you out on your own? No, that? I had to oh. bail. Yeah, dog. I had to wait until I got bailed out. How many days? <laughs> like, not days, hours. Oh, okay. <laughs> and wow. it was like two and it was excruciating still. It actually wasn't too excruciating. It was just humiliating because I saw one of the cops I went to high school with. I'm like, what's up, dude? <laughs> you know, it's like, I didn't think I was going to be on this end of an exchange, you know? Like, as he's processing me. Got to take your hoodie strap out of your hoodie, dude, because uh, you might hang yourself, you know? And I'm like, man, if I could have figured out how to do that, I would have done that shit a <laughs> long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I mean, like, that all that all, all that shit went down. I, I'm so glad I cleaned all that up before I moved out here. And, uh, you know. So what has it been like? You, I know you joke about you don't care about that girl, but what has it been like dating? I oh, mean, do man. you have to do like do you go on the sites? No, I I gave up on those uh, apps. I deleted them and shit. Did you, you did try them. I'm unfortunate looking, and I realized that, so it's not a great way for me to meet women. But do you have to give them a heads up, or do you give them a heads up on the dating app that, about my eye? Yeah, your vision in general. I mean, I th- I, I always assume it's apparent. Like you need to drive, you know. You put that kind of shit on. <laughs> I don't. I must it, have license. It has been a thing where like people C are like, class you know, prefer. I think with Uber, Uber has by the way changed my life. I don't have to drive. I feel like anymore. I'm not trying to advertise for them or anything. But I mean, like the whole ride sharing thing has made it so I don't have to do it. Anymore. I, not only is it, I, it's also helped with comedy too. Like I feel like so many more people are coming out to shows because they don't have to worry about parking and then getting a DUI on the way home. Mm-hmm. If they drink too much or whatever. I really think it's that. In addition to this boom of comedy. I think ride sharing has been a big part in these cities to help get people out to the And clubs. now you'll fly to a city that you didn't necessarily want to fly to because you're like, how do I get around? You know, it's going to be right. a nightmare. So you're not like, now I can just fly there and get an Uber from the airport instead of drive all the way there fucking 12 hours or some shit. I mean, I still drove, I drove to fucking St. Louis. I remember I told Joey Diaz, I drove to St. Louis and he was like, holy shit. You know, like he was freaked out about that. Yeah, and then, and then like I did, like I always feel you terrible. Drove Buffalo to St. Louis. Yeah, I always feel Jesus terrible when I have to drive like a comic home at the end of the show because like I've put. I remember Tom like the first time I had to drive Tom home, he was like, "You know, I'm about to have a baby, right?" <laughs> Listen, I know you're right out of yeah. work, but I want both of them on the road. I can't okay? imagine what he was feeling. <laughs> I drove him home from a Bills game one time in a snow in a snowstorm, and uh, I told him, "I'm like, no, dude, this is better this way." Everyone. Why like, didn't he just drive? I don't know. He didn't offer. He can drive. He loves driving too. I don't know why he didn't just offer. I think we were just still hang- just started hanging out or some shit. I don't know. But um, he didn't even he didn't ask or anything either. He could have. I let everyone drive my car. I let Big J drive my car. I let everybody because like I I feel better. You can you can drive my car. I don't. 
if you feel uncomfortable with me driving, you can drive it. You Listen, I'm, I'm just for moving forward. If it ever happens, I definitely want to drive, bro. Of course. I definitely want to drive. Oh, After man. hearing these stories, I, I definitely want to uh, drive. Because I, I was, I drove Big J around a lot the one couple, couple of times and he, I almost like hit a person and he was like, that's it. <laughs> He's like, that's, it's a wrap yeah, on your like, ass. We're, gonna use your, we're still gonna use your car, but and I had like a I had like a Monte Carlo at the time, so he was like, "You drive this?" Like it was like a muscle car. It was kind of weird for me. Weird look for me. That's also a car you could sideswipe shit back in the day and not have terror. It wasn't one of those. It was like one of the newer car. ones. Oh, but uh, yeah. So I mean, I'm super psyched that I don't have to ever drive again, and uh, and I won't get arrested again. I feel like I feel like driving is associated with going to jail for me. I would just have panic attacks when i see cops all the time you know yeah especially if your shit's not current and yeah and you don't and then like i was in the weeds so much i had to get a lawyer to help me like sort it all out because it's like then you got tickets in this fucking state tickets in this fucking state tickets you know and it was a fucking shit show and i didn't even know where i was anymore you know what i mean because i was just driving to gigs and getting pulled over all the fucking time and i remember i told donnell rawlings that i got pulled over one time and he was like you didn't tell me you was an N-word this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Driving without an inspection. That's what he, he I was the only time he ever gave me props like that. That was a special moment. That felt good. Yeah, it did feel good. So let's go back to feeling bad and back to dating. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, no. oh shit. So I think my dating progression worked out in a way that like, I started out being like super too nice to girls to the point of like, they weren't into it. You know how you like that early part of college and shit. Where if you're just like, you are my princess, they're like, <laughs> their fucking vaginas seal up, you know? Mm-hmm. There's, I was in that fucking lane for a while. I remember I in college, there was a girl who, I was like, you want to get high? Now, I was on to something with that, but I didn't realize it. You definitely were. So I was like, let's go smoke in my car. So we go out to the car, we get super high, and we start making out. And I'm like, boom, I have a girlfriend. I thought I had a girlfriend. Right. And I'm a virgin at this point. I'm like, now we're definitely having sex. This is so happening. And I didn't know how to initiate those steps. I thought she would naturally do it. And she didn't. We just made out, made out, made out. And then she started like going for stuff. And I was like, like she started like doing other stuff with her hands and shit. And I'm like, yes, we are married. We're going to, this is my We're girlfriend. married. Yeah. Like I can't, I'm going to call my mom tomorrow and be like, get another place set for dinner. You better build a room on the house, yeah, mom. Yeah. Her name is Kim. No, uh, I was super like, that's how I was though. I thought this is what happens. This girl wouldn't just hook up with me in a car. So the next morning. So did you stop her? No, no, we kept going, but we didn't like, I, I didn't ante, up the ante ever. So it would stop out at like hand stuff or whatever. Hand, and I, hand stuff. Yeah. And I thought we've got our whole lives in front of us to have sex. This is fine. Right, this is my wife. Yeah. So I, uh, I, it never came to me. That she might just be a girl who wants to just do some drugs and make out in a car. And so she had to work at Tim Hortons the next morning at 7 a.m. And there was like one Tim Hortons in this town and I had to pass it on my way out. And uh, it was in Brockport, by the way, in college, Brockport. And so I had to pass this Tim Hortons on my way out of town. So I thought, I'm going to pick up a rose and put it on her car like some fucking John Cusack shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Put a little note on that shit. Tell her what's up. Back when that was romantic and not stalkerish. Well, no, it turns out it's, it was stalkerish yeah. in this day <laughs> when I did it because she was not thrilled. That's not that terrible. Could you imagine? I'm not, like looking back on that shit, I can't imagine what she must have been thinking because she's like probably at work. She's like got to go to work super early at Tim Hortons to like make coffee for fucking people and shit. Got a 7 a.m. rose yeah, all and she's probably all on it and shit. hung over and shit, you know? She's like, oh, fuck. I'm, I, last night I got a little too out of control and she's like at work like, pouring the coffee and then she's like goes out to her car and she's like what the fuck did you leave an, a letter oh yeah a note a note like fucking dick and shit you know what i'm saying i was like <laughs> you are the light in my fucking life and shit i was a real piece of shit back then a real uh, asshole i hated my i hate myself looking back that's why i never lost my virginity because i just didn't know what i was doing like i had a girlfriend all through high school no one knows what they're i still don't know what i'm doing nobody knows what the fuck they're doing my girlfriend all through high school though was a christian girl so she was like i'm not having sex till i'm married and i'm like that's cool this mouth stuff's pretty dope i haven't had that before you know what i mean i didn't give a shit i'm like we're doing that mouth shit still that's i'm not coming anyway, anyway so. yeah yeah i mean i mean it was fucking wild but uh we were like the if they would have put us in the yearbook for one of those like uh 
what are they called? Like the shit that they put you in the year before, like most funny or whatever. Yeah, we best would have been couple like, or yeah, we would have been like sixty nine king and queen. Really, that's like what we that was our jam. That's dude. what. <laughs> yeah. That was like that was it. Huh? Cause she cause she was like, I'm not having sex till I'm I married. love that she's Christian. She's not yeah, having she, sex, but she'll we'd suck sixty nine like else. a psycho. <laughs> that was our go to. I mean, we started at sixty nine. Like I can shit. read scripture from this angle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, eventually I realized once I started working in radio and girls started like liking me for being in a context and I started doing stand up, and that's when I started being able to talk to girls because I see them out after a show. I'm a little more uh, able to talk to a, a woman after she sees me perform for whatever reason. Well, do you also find that just in the stand-up world, because I found this for me with rejection, it wasn't even a big deal. Oh, you know what I mean? Like yeah. girl well, turns you out, like whatever. I just bombed in front of 200 people. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's well, one more? I don't even like, I don't even, I think in my older age of thirties now, I don't even approach girls anymore. I wait. Like now it's just like, if they want to talk to me, they will. Because if I approach them, I'm coming at it disadvantage. Like, could you imagine? A wonky eyed five five guy like me walking are up you to you. Are you five five? Yeah, dude. Just like walking up to you being like, So can I buy you a drink? Like, what are you gonna think? I know that I know what's going on here from A to B. You can't just have that be the first thing. You know what I mean? So what is that? That's not like pessimism or anything. It has to be me in a context. They have to understand that I'm like, okay, so when a girl sees me at a good show, for instance, where I am do well. Let's take the Baltimore show. You crushed when I saw right, you and in it's Baltimore. At, it's at a place like... 2,000 people. Yeah, and it's a big place. So it's like, obviously, I've done something, and I'm not like a complete mental ill person to the point of like, I can't function. You know what I'm saying? Like in a conversation, I'm at least somewhat normal to like interact business-wise, I guess, with people. I don't know. It puts you in a context that's a little disarming for the woman because she hears you talk for a fucking half hour about yourself essentially and sure you're making jokes and shit but they kind of get a bit of a gauge of your tenor at least you know as opposed to like just approaching a woman in a bar and being like here's what i look like <laughs> now you're gonna have to go from there you know what i'm saying yeah it's a bad place to start i get that just makes sense to me it's not a bad outlook on things people are like oh you're pessimistic for saying that it's like maybe i, I think i'm just realistic you know? Well, only you would know you've lived this life. Everyone right. everyone with two good eyes can sit there and tell you whatever the fuck they want the whole time. Right. I'm the know. one who had to lay on my fucking face for six yeah. weeks, motherfucker. Where were you? Six weeks. Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. Glenn Campbell got me through. S- really? Yeah, dude. He's the man. So I want to go back as you said you were going to... That I had asked you about, remember when you knew someone's phone number and you said you actually had a story about... Oh, when I got arrested uh, with the DWI thing, I was at the pay for my one phone call I was at the pay phone and I couldn't remember like does my mom's phone number end in a like eight or a six I couldn't fucking remember and I stared at it and the cop who like was nice to me he was like hey man what's up uh why don't you come over here and use your cell phone I cannot have you crying in here anymore (laughs) he was tired of you crying Call, you he's like, call my, whoever you want to shoot my service revolver or something, cheer yeah. you up, man. Call whoever you, you want me. Can't be in here crying. Crying. <laughs> crying. <laughs> no. That's my jail story. Uh, he knew. He knew you might call the wrong number and cry harder. Oh, he knew. He saw me staring at that pay phone. He's like, he doesn't remember shit. He's like, can you come over here? You just pick him out of the phone. Call as many as you want. Call whoever the fuck you want. It's your As long as you data. got unlimited minutes, <laughs> yeah, call yeah, whoever the fuck you want. It's your minutes, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god fucking millennial brain dude it's broken so how is dating now dating are now you seeing is, anyone now uh actually i i just kind of started seeing somebody yeah. that i really like actually so it's well you joked cool. earlier that you'd have to go with someone that has another ailment or whatever does this girl oh no 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 i i don't think that's the case uh I, cause I'm as shallow as the next, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what I mean? Does this if girl I have a handicap? Me, she does not. Have, uh, you ever that dated, have you ever dated a girl with a handicap? I don't think I have. Other than the broken leg girl. She was pretty, that was probably, she was pretty yeah, she, fucked up for a yeah. while, dude. I mean, that was like taking care of an old person for a while. I mean, I thought we were going to have to get a special. Told you to wear the chucks. Like, I we're told gonna, you. <laughs> we're going to have to get one of those chairs for your bathtub. Like what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? Um, poor girl. She's fine. now. How'd you meet the new girl? Uh, just through uh, doing comedy and stuff, which is crazy. DMs. The DMs. Man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 
There you go. Tom and Christina have helped out my life in so many ways, and one of them is being the DMs. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it now, because they're going to be able to ruin it the same exact way. Oh, dude. Uh, and love I'm doing sure. every second of it. Too. I'm sure. I'm sure. But no, I'm I'm thankful for uh, this uh, and meeting this woman. I mean, she's great. I mean, it's gotten to the point where like she could say anything and it doesn't scare me. You know? Yeah. She could be like, uh, you know, talking about marriage and stuff like that, and it wouldn't frighten me. And she could be like, the Jews control the weather, and I'd be like, okay, maybe. And you're like, I want to drive, and she's like, I'm fucking scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's she not. She can drive, so she can drive everywhere. It's all on her. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming on and opening up and sharing everything. Thank uh, you for having I, I'm, me. I'm glad to do this with you, man. I've been looking forward to doing this. Yeah, man. You. I love, um, your, love your shit. So. Well, I love you. And um, I'm really um, really thankful you opened up. I'm sure that's not easy to sit there and talk about. Oh, that. no, you I, probably do, I do it all the time. talk about it your whole fucking life. And, um, but one more time, will you please promote anything you'd like to promote, your website, your social media, all that good stuff? Yes, thank you so much to all the people who came to the Hollywood Improv this past Friday night. Sold My out, God. one. Oh, boy. I mean, they you were did just, two, You ended up doing two shows. They bounced it off the ceiling. <laughs> I mean, that, is that place still standing? I don't know. But uh, thank you if you did, for real. And uh, you can find me on Twitter, at J underscore Potter, and on uh, Instagram, at Josh underscore Potter. And uh, check me out in L.A. I'll be in L.A. for a while. If you want me to come to your town, tell your fucking comedy club in your town and just yell at them. And then maybe they'll bring me because we've been trying. So, <laughs> yeah, go see Josh. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So thank you, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Uh, I am Ryan Sickler on all social media, RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. <laughs>